Hello there, this is Jesslyn Vargas joining you from New York City. I will be the course moderator for this course series, Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. This course series is brought to you by GBRI and I Believe. GBRI, as many of you may already know, is an AIA education provider and a USGBC education partner. Our mission is to make sustainability available and affordable to everyone around the world. We have hundreds of sustainability courses surrounding the topics of energy, water, lead, net zero buildings, green schools, energy modeling, daylighting, BIM, to name a few. In addition, we also have lead and well AP exam prep materials. I believe is a non-profit organization based out of the US founded with the belief that every individual including you and me has the power to make a difference in the societies we live in working towards a sustainable future be it in the east or in the west their mission is to inspire and empower individuals to donate their efforts or time or money to local projects that they care about be it helping fellow human beings conserving the environment or protecting animals this course series is one among many educational programs developed as part of a campaign titled Change Begins With Me. You may learn more about this campaign on the GPRI or iBelieve.org websites. The UN does not need an introduction. Programs and policies backed by the United Nations have shaped the world we live in for the past half century. The latest program, which has been in development for four years, is the release of the Sustainable Development Goals. Officially known as Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is a set of 17 aspirational global goals with 169 targets between them. By 2030, these goals aim to combat the world's most wicked and pressing problems including poverty, hunger and climate change among many others. Join us as GBRI Senior Research Associate Sarah Spencer explores the UN Sustainable Development Goals, analyzes each goal and invites each of us to be part of this historic movement. Listed here are the course objectives. By the end of this course, you will be able to understand the UN's contributions to social equality, human wellness, and the environment, and the process used to develop the goals. Identify each sustainable development goals, analyze the targets of each goal, understand how governments, businesses, and individuals can have an impact on achieving the goals. Last but not the least, we will also learn how to take immediate participatory action in favor of the goals. Since this course series runs over three hours, we broke it into three parts so that users may watch it on their own schedule. The series as a whole is approved for CE and each part is separately approved for CE hours as well. Under part one, we will introduce SDGs and go over SDGs 1 through 6. By SDGs, I mean Sustainable Development Goals. SDGs 1 through 6 address issues namely poverty, hunger, health and well-being, education, gender equality and clean water. Under part 2, Sarah will go over SDGs 7 through 12 that address issues related to clean energy, economic growth, innovation and infrastructure, inequalities, cities and communities, and consumption and production. And under part 3, we'll go over SDGs 13 through 17 that address issues related to climate change, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and partnership for the goals. Under part 3, we will also look at extra actions for governments, 
businesses, building professionals, and how each of us can participate in realizing these goals by 2030. Thank you very much for the introduction. Let's begin with Section 1, Introduction and History of the Sustainable Development Goals. So, what are the Sustainable Development Goals, commonly shortened to SDGs? The United Nations developed these goals over a two-year period, looking toward the future of our planet through 2030. There are 17 goals in total. Each goal is backed up by a set of more specific targets that describe what exactly will need to happen in order to make these goals into reality. The goals came into effect when nearly all of the world's nations agreed upon them on September 25, 2015. Has the UN done anything like this in the past? In short, yes. The Sustainable Development Goals are a reiteration of a similar program the UN has developed in the past. The Millennium Development Goals, or MDGs, served a similar purpose but were developed for the timeline from 2000 to 2015. The MDGs placed a focus on public health and poverty eradication with some good measurable progress made. The UN hopes to fill any gaps in achievement remaining with a more focused set of goals, the SDGs. Another visionary program developed by the UN is called The Future We Want, released in November 2011. It depicts what sustainable communities around the world might look like 20 years from now. Although these goals are quite comprehensive in scope, the UN also runs several other ongoing campaigns including advocating for democracy, countering genocide, and sustainability measures throughout their buildings on the ground. Check out their sustainability report, which includes information on the UN's goal for climate neutrality. The 2030 Challenge is a similar goal and was created by Architecture 2030, a nonprofit think tank transforming climate change problems into solutions through the design of the built environment. The 2030 Challenge declares all new buildings, developments, and major renovations shall be carbon neutral by 2030. Architecture firms can participate by reporting their design portfolio or developing a sustainable action plan to improve their firm's operations. What sets the SDGs apart? For one, universality. The SDGs apply to every nation and every sector everywhere. Whether you are a city, business, school, organization, or individual, all are challenged to act. Integration. All goals are interconnected and interdependent on one another. We cannot aim to achieve just one goal. We must achieve them all. Transformation. In order to achieve the SDGs, we will need to fundamentally change the way we live on Earth. Let's go over how the UN decided on this specific set of goals. Establishing post-2015 goals was an outcome of the Rio Plus 20 Summit in 2012, which mandated the creation of an open working group to come up with a draft agenda for the SDGs. The open working group, with representatives from 70 countries, had its first meeting in March 2013 and published the final draft in July 2014. All the goals and targets were negotiated and agreed upon in August 2015. Over 4 million people participated in an online survey called My World 2015, which took the most pertinent issues into account when developing the SDGs. So as to reach all stakeholders, the UN used other strategies as well, such as going door-to-door -door in communities that may not have internet access to access the survey. Moving on to Section 2, In-Depth Analysis of the Sustainable Development Goals. In this section, we will go over each SDG and its targets in detail, as well as go over specific ways stakeholders can help with each goal. Goal 1, End Extreme Poverty in All Forms by 2030. Yes, it's an ambitious goal, but it can be done. In 2000, the world committed to cutting the number of people living in extreme poverty by half in 15 years, and we met this goal. However, 
More than 800 million people around the world still live on less than $1.25 a day. That's about the equivalent of the entire population of Europe living in extreme poverty. Now, it's time to end poverty altogether. Target 1.1 By 2030, eradicate extreme poverty for all people everywhere. Extreme poverty is currently measured as people living on less than $1.25 a day. Target 1.1 requires that by 2030, extreme poverty will be eradicated in all corners of the earth. Target 1.2 By 2030, reduce at least by half the proportion of men, women, and children living in poverty. This includes people of all ages and all dimensions of poverty according to national definitions. This target aims to reduce by at least half all people living in poverty. Some examples of dimensions of poverty include income poverty, education and health poverty, tenure insecurity, personal and financial insecurity, and social and political exclusion. Target 1.3 Implement nationally appropriate social protection systems and measures for all, and, by 2030, achieve substantial coverage of the poor and the vulnerable. This target calls for implementing social protection systems. Some of the most common types of social protection are labor market interventions, which are policies and programs designed to promote employment, the efficient operation of labor markets, and the protection of workers. Another type of social protection is social insurance, which mitigates risks associated with unemployment, ill health, disability, work-related injuries, and old age such as health insurance or unemployment insurance. Finally, social assistance is when resources, either cash or in-kind, are transferred to vulnerable individuals or households with no other means of adequate support, including single parents, the homeless, or the physically or mentally challenged. Target 1.4 By 2030, ensure that all men and women have equal rights to economic resources, and access to basic services, ownership and control over land, and other forms of property, inheritance, natural resources, appropriate new technology, and financial services, including microfinance. In particular, this target applies to the poor and the vulnerable. It is imperative that all people have unrestricted access to economic resources. Microfinance describes a source of financial services for entrepreneurs and small businesses lacking access to banking and related services, such as in developing countries. Target 1.5 By 2030, build the resilience of the poor and those in vulnerable situations, and reduce their exposure and vulnerability to climate-related extreme events and other economic, social, and environmental shocks and disasters. Typically, the poor are the hardest hit by any type of disaster, by a large margin. This can be prevented, in particular, by improving or providing risk management and coping systems, including cost-effective early warning systems, flexible social safety nets, and cash transfer schemes, which can mitigate damages and limit them to the short term. Target 1A Ensure significant mobilization of resources from a variety of sources in order to provide adequate and predictable means for developing countries to implement programs and policies to end poverty in all its dimensions, including through enhanced development cooperation, which is an activity that aims explicitly to support national or international development policies, is not driven by profit, discriminates in favor of developing countries, and is based on cooperative relationships that seek to enhance developing country ownership. This is particularly important in least developed countries. Target 1b. Create sound policy frameworks at the national, regional, and international levels, based on pro-poor and gender-sensitive development strategies to support accelerated investment in poverty eradication actions. Let's go over what pro-poor and gender-sensitive development entail a bit. Pro-poor growth has been broadly defined by a number of international organizations as growth that leads to significant reductions in poverty. Growth is pro-poor when the poor benefit disproportionately from it. 
This criterion is met if the rate of income growth of the poor exceeds the rate of income growth of the non-poor. Thus, in order for growth to be pro-poor, it must be accompanied by a decrease in inequality. Gender-sensitive development entails holding governments accountable for gender equality commitments and investments, and ensuring that gender equality is explicitly included in government priorities, and matched by adequate resources to address inequalities. Let's go over some actions we can take in order to address poverty. You can become actively engaged in policymaking to make a difference in addressing poverty. This will ensure your rights are promoted, your voice is heard, and knowledge from generations, both past and present, is shared. This will also ensure innovation and critical thinking are encouraged at all ages to support transformational change in people's lives and communities. Governments can help create an enabling environment to generate productive employment and job opportunities for the poor and marginalized by formulating strategies and fiscal policies that stimulate pro-poor growth and reduce poverty. Moving on to goal two, end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. In the past 20 years, hunger has dropped by almost half. Many countries that used to suffer from famine and hunger can now meet the nutritional needs of their most vulnerable people. It's an incredible accomplishment. Now we can go further and end hunger and malnutrition once and for all. That means doing things such as promoting sustainable agriculture and supporting small farmers. It's a tall order, but for the sake of the nearly one out of nine people on earth who go to bed hungry every night, we've got to try. Imagine a world where everyone has access to sufficient and nutritious food all year round. Together, we can make that a reality by 2030. Target 2.1. By 2030, end hunger and ensure access by all people to safe, nutritious, and sufficient food all year round. This applies in particular to the poor and people in vulnerable situations, including infants. Modern agriculture has achieved much over the past century. While the global population has grown from less than 3 billion people in 1950 to more than 7 billion people today, Global levels of hunger have not followed this trend, remaining largely constant over the same period. Of the estimated 805 million people experiencing chronic hunger globally, around three quarters live in rural areas and are overwhelmingly dependent on agriculture for their food and livelihoods. Target 2.2. By 2030, end all forms of malnutrition, including Achieve by 2025 the internationally agreed targets on stunting and wasting children under five years of age, and address the nutritional needs of adolescent girls, pregnant and lactating women, and older persons. The internationally agreed target for stunting is to reduce stunted and wasting children by 40%. Stunting, or low height for age, is caused by long-term insufficient nutrient intake and frequent infections. Stunting generally occurs before age 2, and effects are largely irreversible. These include delayed motor development, impaired cognitive function, and poor school performance. Nearly one-third of children under 5 in the developing world are stunted. Wasting, or low weight for height, is a strong predictor of mortality among children under 5. It is usually the result of acute significant food shortage and or disease. There are 24 developing countries with wasting rates of 10% or more, indicating a serious problem urgently requiring a response. Target 2.3. By 2030, double the agricultural productivity and incomes of small-scale food producers, including through secure and equal access to land, other productive resources and inputs, knowledge, financial services, markets and opportunities for value addition, and non-farm employment. In particular, this applies to women, indigenous peoples, family farmers, pastoralists, and fishers. Increased productivity, when coupled with better access to markets, can help address hunger directly at the farm level or provide sufficient additional income to buy food at a market. For instance, 
The agricultural sector accounts for one-third of gross domestic product and three-quarters of employment in sub-Saharan Africa. Boosting rural incomes and ensuring ample employment means looking at economic opportunities across the entire rural value chain, from farmers and input suppliers to value-added processing and services, such as transporting and marketing of food. Target 2.4 by 2030, ensure sustainable food production systems and implement resilient agricultural practices that increase productivity and production, help maintain ecosystems, strengthen capacity for adaptation to climate change, extreme weather, drought, and flooding and other disasters, and progressively improve land and soil quality. Agriculture is more vulnerable to climate change than any other sector. A warming climate could reduce crop yields by more than 25%, according to the World Bank. Making agriculture more resilient in the face of climate change will be important, and thankfully there are many ways how to make this happen, from investing in drip irrigation and soil health to promoting disaster preparedness. Target 2.5 By 2020, maintain the genetic diversity of seeds, cultivated plants, farmed and domesticated animals and their related wild species, and promote access to and fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the utilization of genetic resources and associated traditional knowledge, as internationally agreed. Increasing agricultural productivity means that we can produce the food our global population needs while keeping as much other land as natural habitat as possible, where biodiversity can flourish. Smallholder farmers play a key role as they hold as much as 75% of the global seed diversity in staple food crops, with the rest being held in gene banks. The Nagoya Protocol, or the international agreement mentioned above, will create greater legal certainty and transparency for both providers and users of genetic resources by helping to ensure benefit sharing. The Nagoya Protocol creates incentives to conserve and sustainably use genetic resources, and therefore enhances the contribution of biodiversity to development and human well-being, including through soundly managed and diversified seed and plant banks at the national, regional, and international levels. Target 2A. Increase investment in rural infrastructure, agricultural research and extension services, technology development, and plant and livestock gene banks. This will enhance agricultural productive capacity in developing countries, and in particular, least developed countries. Investment should include enhanced international cooperation, as we discussed before. There is one general consensus that investing in rural public goods such as roads, power, irrigation, education, health, water, agricultural research and extension, is one of the best ways to support agricultural production and livelihoods. A total of $239 billion invested over the next 15 years in road and railway connections to connect farms to markets and in electricity supplies to improve cold storage would yield benefits of $3.1 trillion by safeguarding food. Target 2B. Correct and prevent trade restrictions and distortions in world agricultural markets in accordance with the mandate of the Doha Development Round including through the parallel elimination of all forms of agricultural export subsidies and all export measures with equivalent effect. Agricultural export subsidies allow exporters to grab market share in import markets from competing exporters, put downward pressure on the level of world market prices, and compete unfairly with local producers in many developing countries. The Doha Development Round or Doha Development Agenda, is the latest trade negotiation round of the World Trade Organization, which commenced in November 2001. Its objective was to lower trade barriers around the world and thus facilitate increased global trade. Target 2C. Adopt measures to ensure the proper functioning of food commodity markets and their derivatives, and facilitate timely access to market information including on food reserves, in order to help limit extreme food price vo volatility. Food price volatility, consisting of sudden jumps or drops in prices, is often more problematic than the actual food price level itself. When price fluctuations occur quickly, farmers and other suppliers cannot plan accordingly or react quickly enough to meet demand easily. In these instances, 
Governments may respond by banning or restricting food exports or amassing huge food reserves out of fear of shortages, whether real or perceived, and to protect national security interests. These measures can drive prices up even higher, especially when information on global food reserves is not readily available. Effective commodity markets can help limit price volatility and work to get farmers the best price for the crops they grow. Let's go over some changes we can make to fight hunger. Changes don't have to be huge to be effective. Take action in your own life by visiting the farmer's market every once in a while and staying informed about where your food comes from. Don't know what food is considered sustainable? Look for fair trade goods, which means that farmers are treated and paid fairly and equitably. Watch your food waste and perhaps start a compost pile or community garden to help combat it. Not only can you vote for these sustainable practices in the polls as an informed citizen, but you can vote with your dollar as well. Only purchase food and other goods that you can feel good about buying. This will in turn pressure your favorite businesses to stock more sustainable products and pursue different business models. Social media is a powerful tool. Join the conversation about ending world hunger. You can also join the global movement for zero hunger by joining the Zero Hunger Challenge to learn more, including more ways to take action. Goal three is about health. Ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. We all know how important it is to be in good health. Our health affects everything from how much we enjoy life to what work we can perform. That's why there's a goal to make sure everyone has health coverage and access to safe and effective medicines and vaccines. Since 1990, we've made big strides. Preventable child deaths are down by more than half, and maternal mortality is down by almost as much. And yet, some other numbers remain tragically high, like the fact that every year, 6 million children die before their fifth birthday, or that AIDS is the leading cause of death for adolescents in sub-Saharan Africa. We have the means to turn that around and make good health more than just a wish. Target 3.1 By 2030, reduce the global maternal mortality ratio to less than 70 per 100,000 live births. Every day, approximately 830 women die from preventable causes related to pregnancy and childbirth, and 99% of all maternal deaths occur in developing countries. That is why the UN has developed this target. Target 3.2. By 2030, end preventable deaths of newborns and children under 5 years of age, with all countries aiming to reduce neonatal mortality to at least as low as 12 per 1,000 live births, and under 5 mortality to at least as low as 25 per 1,000 live births. 5.9 million children under age 5 died in 2015. That's about 16,000 every day. Many countries still have very high under-5 mortality, particularly those in Africa, with an under-5 mortality rate above 100 deaths per 1,000 live births. In addition, inequities in child mortality between high-income and low-income countries remain large. Reducing these inequities across countries and saving more children's lives by ending preventable child deaths are important priorities. Target 3.3 by 2030, end the epidemics of AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria and neglected tropical diseases, and combat hepatitis, waterborne diseases, and other communicable diseases. Aside from the obvious improvements in people's lives, combating e epidemic diseases has positive economic effects as well. If diseases like AIDS are controlled, the toll on adults in particular is considerably lower meaning there are more people available to the workforce and the cost of treating the sick is much lower. Target 3.4 By 2030, reduce by one-third premature mortality from non-communicable diseases through prevention and treatment, and promote mental health and well-being. Non-communicable diseases are the leading causes of death worldwide and account for nearly two-thirds of all global deaths. Low- and middle-income countries and the poorest and most vulnerable populations are the hardest hit, but this epidemic can be significantly reduced if we take action now. Simple interventions, when properly taught, can have huge benefits at a population level. 
Target 3.5, strengthen the prevention and treatment of substance abuse, including narcotic drug abuse and harmful use of alcohol. Drug abuse is a common societal menace that has been spreading its wings across different societies and communities for ages. The harmful and fatal effects of the use of narcotic drugs and excessive alcohol have been witnessed by many families across the globe, causing the complete devastation of a family and its future. Target 3.6. By 2020, have the number of global deaths and injuries from road traffic accidents. Every year, the lives of approximately 1.25 million people are cut short as a result of a road traffic crash. Between 20 and 50 million more suffer non-fatal injuries, with many incurring a disability as a result of their injury. Target 3.7. By 2030, ensure universal access to sexual and reproductive health care services, including for family planning, and information and education, and integrate reproductive health into national strategies and programs. Enabling women and girls to delay, space, and limit their pregnancies leads to lower health care costs, keeps more girls in school and for more years, and ensures more women in the workforce. It directly benefits key development goals at the household, community, and national levels. Target 3.8. Achieve universal health coverage, including financial risk protection. Achieve access to quality essential health care services and access to safe, effective, quality, and affordable essential medicines and vaccines for all. Access to health services ensures healthier people, while financial risk protection prevents people from being pushed into poverty. Therefore, universal health coverage is a critical component of sustainable development and poverty reduction and a key element to reducing social inequities. Target 3.9. By 2030, substantially reduce the number of deaths and illnesses from hazardous chemicals and air, water, and soil pollution and contamination. The WHO reports that in 2012, around 7 million people died one in eight of total global deaths as a result of air pollution exposure. Reducing air pollution could save millions of lives. Target 3A. Strengthen the implementation of the World Health Organization Framework Convention on Tobacco Control in all countries as appropriate. The WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control is the first treaty negotiated under the auspices of the World Health Organization. It was developed in response to the globalization of the tobacco epidemic. The treaty proposes various ways to reduce the demand of tobacco as well as the supply. Target 3B. Support the research and development of vaccines and medicines for the communicable and non-communicable diseases that primarily affect developing countries, and provide access to affordable essential medicines and vaccines in accordance with the Doha Declaration on the TRIPS Agreement and Public Health, and provide access to medicines for all. The Doha Declaration on the TRIPS Agreement and Public Health was created to clarify ambiguities between the need for governments to apply the principles of public health and the terms of the TRIPS Agreement, which is an international agreement administered by the WTO that sets down minimum standards for many forms of intellectual property regulation. In particular, concerns have been growing that patent rules might restrict access to affordable medicines for populations in developing countries. Target 3C. Substantially increase health financing and increase the recruitment, development, training, and retention of the health workforce in developing countries, especially in least developed countries and small island developing states. Every country could raise additional domestic funds for health or diversify their funding sources if they wish to. Options include governments giving higher priority to health in their budget allocations and other funding mechanisms such as taxes on harmful products such as tobacco. Target 3D. Strengthen the capacity of all countries, in particular developing countries, for early warning, risk reduction, Management of National and Global Health Risks To help meet public health challenges, countries are encouraged to strengthen their capacities for emergency risk management, incorporating measures for prevention, mitigation, preparedness, and response and recovery. Moving on to Goal 4, 
ensure inclusive and equitable quality education, and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. First, the bad news on education. Poverty, armed conflict, and other emergencies keep many, many kids around the world out of school. In fact, in developing regions, kids from the poorest households are four times more likely to be out of school than those of the richest households. Now for some good news. Since 2000, there has been enormous progress on the goal to provide primary education to all children worldwide. The primary school enrollment rate in developing regions reached 91%. By measures in any school, that's a good grade. Now, let's get an even better grade for all kids and achieve the goal of universal primary and secondary education, affordable vocational training, and access to higher education. Target 4.1. By 2030, ensure that all girls and boys complete free, equitable, and quality primary and secondary education, leading to relevant and effective learning outcomes. Countries must make primary education accessible to their citizens by providing tuition-free and compulsory education at the primary and secondary levels. Target 4.2. By 2030, ensure that all girls and boys have access to quality early childhood development and care and pre-primary education. There is strong evidence that early childhood care and education is one of the best investments a country can make to prepare children for learning in school and for prospering later in life. Quality early childhood care and education promotes children's social, emotional, physical, and cognitive development and helps them develop their full potential. Target 4.3. By 2030, ensure equal access for all women and men to affordable and quality technical, vocational, and tertiary education, including university. Some other educational options for developing countries could be agricultural training, which increases adults' ability to produce, purchase, and consume healthy food, and capacity building, which supports community-led advocacy for education, especially for girls, and educational policy making at local, regional, and country levels. Target 4.4. By 2030, substantially increase the number of youth and adults who have relevant skills, including technical and vocational skills for employment, decent jobs, and entrepreneurship. Skills acquisition is vital for an economy to compete and grow, particularly in an era of economic integration and technological change. Skill needs are widespread in most developing countries. They are not only demanded by the modern wage sector, but also by the agricultural and informal sectors. A more skilled workforce creates more high-quality jobs and spurs positive development. Target 4.5. By 2030, eliminate gender disparities in education. Ensure equal access to all levels of education and vocational training for the vulnerable including persons with disabilities, indigenous peoples, and children in vulnerable situations. Girls and women who achieve higher level of education are greater contributors to overall economic development and to children's welfare within communities. Achieving educational equity for girls, including educating communities on the value of girls' education, is an essential factor in sustainable poverty alleviation. Target 4.6 by 2030, ensure that all youth and a substantial proportion of adults, both men and women, achieve literacy and numeracy. No country has ever achieved rapid and continuous economic growth without at least a 40% literacy rate. Target 4.7 By 2030, ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, including, among others, through education for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyles, human rights, gender equality, promotion of a culture of peace and nonviolence, global citizenship, and appreciation of cultural diversity and of culture's contribution to sustainable development. Education for sustainable development allows every human being to acquire the knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values necessary to shape a sustainable future. This means including key sustainable development issues into teaching and learning, for example, climate change, disaster risk reduction, biodiversity, 
poverty reduction, and sustainable consumption. It also requires participatory teaching and learning methods that motivate and empower learners to change their behavior and take action for sustainable development. Target 4A. Build and upgrade educational facilities that are child, disability, and gender sensitive, and provide safe, nonviolent, inclusive, and effective learning environments for all. If you don't have a classroom, you don't really have much of a chance of getting a decent education, but that's a reality for millions of children worldwide. Children in many countries in Sub-Saharan Africa are often squeezed into overcrowded classrooms, classrooms that are falling apart, or are learning outside. Target 4B. By 2020, substantially expand globally the number of scholarships available to developing countries for enrollment in higher education, including vocational training, information and communications technology, technical, engineering, and scientific programs in developed countries and other developing countries. Many students from developing countries, in particular least developed countries, small island developing states, and African countries, would not be able to attend an institute of higher learning without the financial help of a scholarship. We must make this funding more widely available. Target 4C. By 2030, substantially increase the supply of qualified teachers, including through international cooperation for teacher training in developing countries, especially for least developed countries and small island developing states. Even where education is state-supported, such as in Ethiopia, gaps exist at the local level in attracting and retaining teachers. It is not uncommon for teachers to work for no salary and just for transportation and allowance, which is not a sustainable solution to ensure children get an adequate education. Let's move on to SDG 5, Achieve Gender Equality and Empower All Women and Girls. The great progress the world has made in becoming more prosperous and fair is worth celebrating. And yet, in just about every way, women and girls lag behind. There are still gross inequalities in work and wages, lots of unpaid women's work such as child care and domestic work, and discrimination in public decision making. But there are grounds for hope. More girls are in school now compared to in 2000. Most regions have reached gender parity in primary education. The percentage of women getting paid for their work is on the rise. The Sustainable Development Goals aim to build on these achievements to ensure that there is an end to discrimination against women and girls everywhere. It's a basic human right. Target 5.1 End all forms of discrimination against all women and girls everywhere. Gender equality is essential for the achievement of human rights for all. Yet discriminatory laws against women persist in every corner of the globe and new discriminatory laws are enacted. Women cannot drive, walk at night, etc. These forms of discrimination against women are incompatible with women's empowerment. Target 5.2 Eliminate all forms of violence against all women and girls in the public and private spheres, including trafficking and sexual and other types of exploitation. Discriminatory attitudes toward women enforce abusive behavior and make it easier for a society to condone violence against women. Also at fault are widespread beliefs that women are to blame for violence against them, a belief shared by many men and women across the globe. Ending the cycle of violence and moving toward gender equality is a vital step in solving other global problems. Target 5.3 Eliminate all harmful practices such as child, early, and forced marriage and female genital mutilation. More than 130 million girls and women have experienced some form of female genital mutilation. In addition, child marriage is widespread. More than 700 million women alive today were married as children. More than one in three were married before the age of 15. Target 5.4. Recognize and value unpaid care and domestic work through the provision of public services, infrastructure, social protection policies, and the promotion of shared responsibility within the household and the family as nationally appropriate. 
The majority of care work, such as cleaning, cooking, and caring for children or elderly, is performed by women and girls and is usually unpaid. Although this work is critical to the proper functioning of communities, unpaid care work has been largely ignored by economic and social public policy initiatives. Target 5.5 Ensure women's full and effective participation and equal opportunities for leadership at all levels of decision-making in political, economic, and public life. From the local to the global level, women's leadership and political participation are restricted. Women are underrepresented as voters, as well as in leading positions, whether in elected office, the civil service, the private sector, or academia. Women face several obstacles to participating in political life. Structural barriers through discriminatory laws and institutions still limit women's options to run for office. Target 5.6 Ensure universal access to sexual and reproductive health and reproductive rights as agreed in accordance with the Program of Action of the International Conference on Population and Development and the Beijing Platform for Action and the outcome documents of their review conferences. The 1994 International Conference on Population and Development articulated a bold new vision about the relationships between population, development, and individual well-being. It remarked that reproductive health and rights, as well as women's empowerment and gender equality, are cornerstones of population and development programs. As a defining framework for change, the Beijing Platform for Action of 1995 imagines a world where each woman and girl can exercise her freedoms and choices and realize all her rights, such as the right to live free from violence, to go to school, to participate in decisions, and to earn equal pay for equal work. Target 5.A. Undertake reforms to give women equal rights to economic resources, ownership and control over land and other forms of property, financial services, inheritance, and natural resources in accordance with national laws. Financial inclusion, which promotes access and the use of high-quality financial services, particularly among poor people, is crucial to achieving inclusive growth. Women disproportionately face financial access barriers that prevent them from participating in the economy and from improving their lives. Women are less likely than men to have formal bank accounts and credit cards and only 30% of all small business owners are women. Target 5B. Enhance the use of enabling technology, in particular information and communications technology, to promote the empowerment of women. The Beijing platform called for the full and equal participation of women in and through media and new technologies of communication. Yet today, 200 million women around the world are still without internet access. Target 5C. Adopt and strengthen sound policies and enforceable legislation for the promotion of gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls at all levels. Deep legal and legislative changes are needed to ensure women's rights around the world. While a record 143 countries guaranteed equality between men and women in their constitutions by 2014, another 52 had not taken this step. In many nations, gender discrimination is still woven through legal and social norms. What can we do to promote gender equality? If you are a girl, stay in school and empower your female classmates to do the same. You can also fight for your right to access sexual and reproductive health services, such as clinics. If you are a woman, Address unconscious biases and implicit associations that can form an unintended and often invisible barrier to equal opportunity. If you are a boy or man, work alongside women and girls to achieve gender equality and embrace healthy and respectful relationships. No matter what your gender, we all can fund education campaigns to curb cultural practices like female genital mutilation. We can also work to change harmful laws that limit the rights of women and girls and prevent them from achieving their full potential. Goal 6, or clean water and sanitation, 
aims to ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Everyone on Earth should have access to safe and affordable drinking water. That's the goal for 2030. While many people around the world take clean drinking water and sanitation for granted, many others don't. Water scarcity affects more than 40% of people around the world, and that number is projected to go even higher as a result of climate change. If we continue the path we're on, by 2050, at least one in four people are likely to be affected by recurring water shortages. But now we can take a new path. More international cooperation, protecting wetlands and rivers, sharing water treatment technologies, and more. That leads to accomplishing this goal. Target 6.1. By 2030, achieve universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all. The lack of access to safe water is deadly, dangerous, and a major obstacle to the people of developing nations becoming economically empowered. It is what is standing between billions of people and their health, safety, and the opportunity to unlock their true potential. Target 6.2 By 2030, achieve access to adequate and equitable sanitation and hygiene for all, and end open defecation paying special attention to the needs of women and girls and those in vulnerable situations. Wherever humans gather, their waste also accumulates. Progress in sanitation and improved hygiene has greatly improved health, but many people still have no adequate means of disposing of their waste. This is a growing nuisance for heavily populated areas, carrying the risk of infectious disease, particularly to the very young, the elderly, and people suffering from diseases that lower their resistance. Target 6.3. By 2030, improve water quality by reducing pollution, eliminating dumping, and minimizing release of hazardous chemicals and materials, having the proportion of untreated wastewater, and substantially increasing recycling and safe reuse globally. Water pollution is a global concern since water quality deterioration results in both environmental and socioeconomic problems. This target aims to reduce freshwater pollution by increasing wastewater collection and treatment. Target 6.4 By 2030, substantially increase water use efficiency across all sectors. Ensure sustainable withdrawals and supply of freshwater to address water scarcity. And substantially reduce the number of people suffering from water scarcity. Excessive water withdrawal causes water stress for both humans and ecosystems, which results in high environmental costs. This target aims to ensure sustainable use of water resources in these sectors by improving the efficiency. Target 6.5. By 2030, implement integrated water resources management at all levels, including through transboundary cooperation as appropriate. Transboundary cooperation is treaties involving water bodies that cross political boundaries. Integrated water resources management is a cross-sectional approach where the development and management of water, land, and related resources is coordinated. Target 6.6. .6. By 2020, protect and restore water-related ecosystems, including mountains, forests, wetlands, rivers, aquifers, and lakes, Natural ecosystems like these are extremely valuable since they provide important ecosystem services regarding water quality and quantity. Degraded ecosystems lose their resilience and result in a decrease in water quality and availability. This target aims to ensure the environment's capacity to provide water-related services by ending the disruption of ecosystems due to human activities. Target 6A by 2030, expand international cooperation and capacity building to support developing countries in water and sanitation related activities and programs, including water harvesting, desalination, water efficiency, wastewater treatment, recycling, and reuse technologies. Appropriately targeted capacity building is key to the implementation of sustainable and demand responsive school and home hygiene, sanitation, and water projects and child-centered hygiene education programs. Target 6B. Support and strengthen the participation of local communities in improving water and sanitation management. 
One of the first ways to work towards this is for the community to elect a local water committee. Because women disproportionately bear the burden of collecting water, it's essential that the committee include female members. What can we do to promote clean water and sanitation? You can work to keep governments accountable. Civil society organizations need to invest in water research and development and promote the inclusion of women, youth, and indigenous communities in water resources governance. You can also get involved in the following campaigns for World Water Day and World Toilet Day. The campaigns aim to provide information and inspiration to take action on hygiene issues. This concludes part one of this series. I hope you found this session informative and engaging. As you can see, these are all pressing issues that affect millions of people on this planet. Some of these issues may seem distant to you and me, and oftentimes you may not be even able to relate to their lives. But the reality is there are millions of people who live in poverty, millions of children who are deprived of education, and millions of girls and women who are forced into marriage and often lead an oppressed life due to gender inequality. We should be thankful and grateful for the childhoods we had and the lives we lead today. Now, what can we do about this? Educating ourselves on the issues is the first part towards finding a solution and that's what this course is about. First is education. As Sarah mentioned, there are ways you and I could participate. Throughout the series, you will hear more ways you and I could participate and make a difference. Here are a couple of links where you can learn more about ideas and projects. The easiest way is to donate money. Well, that's not bad. I personally encourage you to donate your time and talent as well. Think about the ways you can make a difference in the community around you. You may list your ideas and thoughts here or you could follow one of the links on the screen. Thank you, Sarah, for your research and presentation. Under part two, we will do a similar in-depth analysis on the next set of SDGs you see here. These SDGs address issues related to clean energy, economic growth, innovation and infrastructure, inequalities, cities and communities, and consumption and production.